Hey everyone, it's Jonathan from Leica with another video on Cyclone 3DR. In this video, we're going to talk about comparing a mesh and a point cloud. So you can see here, and I've got a uh, ship's hull here that's a mesh, and then I've got a point cloud, just a scan of it. Um, I'll turn one off so you can see a little bit better. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over the uh, comparison tools on the analysis tab in regards to point clouds and meshes. So this might be applicable if you want to compare say a design or an existing surface to a point cloud to existing conditions from a scan that you might have or uh, or anything of that nature. Uh, in our case we're just going to be doing a cloud versus a mesh here but you have a lot of different options underneath these pull downs here. We got cloud versus cloud, cloud versus CAD, geometry, mesh versus mesh, you know, there's a lot of different things, points versus BIM even, and then we can do it with polylines cross sections as well. So the first thing that we're going to do we're going to select both of our objects that we want to compare. So let's select our point cloud, and I'm just going to control click and grab the uh, mesh behind it here. You can see they're pretty close together. You can see that this lit up for us, telling us that we can run this command now. We'll do inspect cloud versus mesh. So the first thing it's going to ask us or tell us is which is our reference object and which is our measure object. In this case, our reference object is mesh one, and then our fusion cloud is our uh, measure object. This is relevant because it's going to ask us which one we want to apply our colors on. So then right now we'd be applying it to the mesh. If I change this toggle, we'd be applying it to the measure. Uh, you can also click on these uh, cursors here to change the selection. So if you needed to change which mesh or point cloud that you were using, you could use those cursors to do so. Then we have three other options here before we run the inspection. So if we leave force projection direction unchecked, this is going to be a proximity check. So it's not going to take direction into account. It's just going to find the closest point of one object to the closest point of another object, and then use that distance to apply the heat map. If we check the box, you can see we can actually determine the color. So like, for example, if we wanted to check just the vertical alignment here, we could leave this Z as a one, and that would check uh, the way that the point cloud compares to the mesh based off of the Z direction only. Then we have an option for max distance here. So what this option will do for us is actually cut off any irrelevant data. So in this case, we might want to set that max distance to, I don't know, everything's pretty tight here. Let's say, um, let's do 10 centimeters. That way, if we had some like scattered point clouds off in the distance, some overspray or things like that, it wouldn't skew our histogram because we want to keep our histogram as relevant as possible like with, our, with the way that our color is run here. And then we have the option to keep only relevant points. If we check that on, that will only keep points that are relevant to the actual data itself. So let's go ahead and uh, run our preview and see what we get here. So that's not too bad. It looks like we might have, okay, so here's our outside 10 centimeters. Here's where we're getting our actual ship bow. That's where we had the, um, the data is smooth there. If I, if I change this back to five centimeters, you'll probably see a little bit different of a, of a preview here. Yeah, so here you can see an example, like we're kind of excluding more of the ship bow points. You see they're gray. Um, that's because they're being excluded by our distance cutoff. But in this case, we probably don't care so much about that bow as we care about uh, the actual hull itself and any sort of deformations that we might have based off of the mesh design, hypothetically. So you can see that this heat map kind of shows us a little bit of information as to as to what the deformation might be, but we can take that a step further in uh, in editing the colors and the way that the heat map is displayed. So first off, we've got our our histogram here. This this purple line uh, and percentages dictate the amount of data, like the number of points that we have or percentage of the object that we have that's within that tolerance. So right now we've got forty five um forty five percent of it is within a centimeter because this is a in metric. This drawing I have is in metric. So uh, what we can do to make this a little bit more readable, let's say that we had a, um, we wanted this to be a tolerance. We had an over and under tolerance. So we can manually edit the histogram here. So you can see uh, we've got sliders. If we click on this bar over here, and then we've got colors that we can change. Um, we can drag the slider. You can see it's updating on my model over here on the right. We can also manually enter. So if I said 0 0.01, it manually moves that slider. We can also 
desynchronize the color and I could change this and you can see that makes it into a, um, a gradient. So that changes it into a color gradient. If I click synchronize color, it changes both the upper and lower color of this particular segment and keeps it uh, a solid color. So you can see like if I click on this section of the bar, we have a gradient that's going from this green to this red um, up at five centimeters. So um, one thing that you have access to in here that's nice in this case is a, there's presets. So we have regular steps preset, we have regular centered, which just makes these um, more banded by solid color. The one that we have that I like to use in this case is, is tolerance. So let's say that we're going to kind of set up a very similar thing that we had before, where our upper limit would be uh, one centimeter here, and our lower limit, I'm just going to use, I'm just going to type it in, one centimeter. Okay. So now you can see that that's changed that way. So let's say that, so our under would be blue and our over would be red. In this scenario, now let's say that we don't really care what's over and under, what's, what's inside or out. All we care is just like a tolerance deviation. Then we could just change both these colors. I might just change them both to red. So now we can see everything that's green is within a centimeter of our design file. Everything that's red is out more than a centimeter. But we might also want to increase uh, the level of specificity that we see out of this. You know, we might want to get a little more granular with this because right now anything that's red could be one centimeter, two, three, four, five. So it could be anything within that range. So one thing that you can do to improve that is you can double click over here on this histogram bar and that actually uh, adds color bands. So we have a new band here where we can do all the things that we did before. Um, in this case, our bottom value of this band is the centimeter. Let's make this 0.25, right? And let's do the same thing with this band, except we're going to be negative 0.025. I'm going to use stoplight colors because that makes sense to my brain. So now you can see we have a little bit more of a gradient. So we can see everything that's within a centimeter to 25 millimeters, and now we got 25 millimeters to 5 centimeters here. So if we adjust this slider, though, you can see that sort of goes away. So in reality, the majority of our error here is within 3 centimeters, almost 4. Um, I'll go back to 0.25 so you can see the way that that works. So that gives us, we can also check the show quotation. Since this is a point cloud, it's going to, it would populate this with a lot of, uh, a lot of quotation data just be numbers of the actual differentials. So I'm not going to do that here, but um, I'll just say OK if I want to accept the way that this looks. So now you can see what happens. Actually, we didn't, it didn't change the color of the fusion cloud, our original point cloud. That's still here. It created a compare and inspect option over here, and we have our compare fusion cloud. So now we can select that cloud, and it'll provide us all the information. So aside from just the, um, the visual information that we have here, we can also use a tool called Measure Deviation that's on the Analysis tab. This Measure Deviation will actually pull uh, relevant data from our comparison for us. So we can actually see anywhere that I click here on these three different labels, let me turn sideways so we can see them, that we get our deviation. So in the green here, I have a 3D deviation of 4 uh, millimeters. And then as I go, you can see it. Uh, fits within our tolerance. So any point that I click on is going to provide that data if I click on it. The other nice thing about that is you'll see there's report data right above this compare and inspect. So if I open the editor, 3DR automatically generates a report for me. Now I can choose to show these labels or not and it puts the labels that I click into a table actually. So all this information is displayed in a table here that I can export to a CSV. But I'll go back to the view now, too, to show you one last thing we can do with this banded inspection information. Um, we can go to the, or the clean tab and split by scalar steps. So if we split by scalar steps of our comparison cloud, what we actually get, turn these labels off so we don't see them. So we have our undefined layer, which is everything that we have over five centimeters. And then we've got our individual steps. 
so we can actually separate out. If we just wanted to target our places that were out more than 25 millimeters, we could do so and then export that out to whatever format we needed to to address that issue. So that's it. That's a quick overview of how the um, analysis tool works for comparing the cloud versus mesh and some of the things that you can do with the data that you pull out of that. Um, hope you find it helpful and I will see you in the next one.